In this video, we're going to talk about triads and triad quality. But before we get started on that, we'll talk about the different um, parts of a triad. So let's take this first one for example. <clears throat> Your bottom note is known as the root. Your middle note is called the third. And your top note is called the fifth. So you have root, third, and fifth. For right now, we're doing everything in root position, so the root will always be on bottom. All right, let's talk a little bit about triad quality. So triads are made up of intervals of a third stacked on top of each other. And whatever the quality of those intervals are, or qualities are, will determine the quality of the triad. So if you have between your root and your third the interval of a major third, and if you have between your third and fifth the interval of a minor third, you're going to have a major sounding triad. Similarly, if you swap that around, if you have the interval of a minor third on bottom and the interval of a major third on top, you're going to have a minor triad. So really all that's happened between these two is that I've taken my third and lowered it by a half step with the flat sign. All right, let's look at the next two. If you have a minor third and another minor third, that's going to make it a diminished triad. So it's almost like your minor triad, except now instead of just the middle note being lowered, the third, we're also going to lower the top note, the fifth and that will make it sound diminished. All right, we also have augmented triads, and that's very similar to our major triad, except you're going to have a major third on bottom and a major third on top. So we accomplish that by raising the top note. With these principles, you can identify any triad starting on any note. You just have to compare the intervals of a third in between all of your notes. Okay, let's try an example of identifying a triad. The triad that I've presented here is E, G sharp, and B. So we want to analyze the distance between your bottom two notes and the distance between your top two notes. Now if you remember, a major third is going to consist of four half steps. So from E to F is one half step, from F to F sharp is two half steps, from F sharp to G is three half steps, and then from G to G sharp you've got your four half steps. That's going to make this a major interval. So now you know that you only have two options that this could be. It could either be a major triad or augmented, because remember minor and diminished have a minor interval of a third on bottom. All right, now we just need to look at the top interval to figure out if it's major or augmented. So we need that to be an interval. Um, if it's going to be a major triad, we need this to be an interval of a minor third. And if it is going to be an augmented triad, this will be a major, <coughs> a major third right here. So let's count our half steps and see what we have. We have G sharp to A would be one half step. From A to A sharp would be two half steps. From A sharp to B, where our note is, would be three half steps. So we have the interval of a minor third on top, which is going to make this whole triad major. 